Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's vlog with repeating, reoccurring guest, Mr. Josh Wiggins. What if they're watching it in the afternoon? Oh, You've already ruined the day. But well, I hope you had a good morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, we've had a great day so far. Well, it's good that we're speaking about mental performance. It is. So uh, my cognitive awareness needs to improve. So today's vlog is all about mental performance. You guys ask the questions. We're here to answer the questions and to try and hopefully give you as much insight and as much knowledge and help as we possibly can on today's vlog. Yes, we're very excited about it. Something that we are very passionate about and we both believe this is a bit of a missing link in anything you're trying to do. So. For a lot of people, especially in the health and fitness space, it's pretty easy to get yourself to the gym, especially if you enjoy it. Most people have an awareness of what good eating looks like and can apply themselves to it, but if you're lacking mentally, eventually you're gonna fall off the wagon, so. Yeah, essentially it's like the fundamental layer that's underneath everything else. You've yeah. got to have your mental awareness, um, your cognitive ability to be able to push through workouts or to even <clears throat> set the right goals, which we're gonna go through in a little bit, then everything else is essentially broken. You try to build a house from the roof down, like it's just yeah. not gonna work. Yeah. You like that analogy? I do, write it down. I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so jumping straight into it. So the first question that we have is actually from one of our own, Mr. Mitchell Briggs. Oh, he's and, a repeat question asked. Yeah, and I like that Mitchell's asked this because- You should start paying us. Yeah, you should, you should. <laughs> so Mitch asked, how do you mentally prepare for a big lift? Ooh, now this is a good one from Mitch because I've never seen him lift big. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna help you out here Mitchell so I hope you're watching so how do you mentally prepare for a big lift uh, so for me it is a bit of confidence so change your body language so body language to something more confident so upright shoulders back and be prepared for the moment for that lift so you would have you would have you wouldn't just attempt something that's 200 kilos more than what you've lifted before so be confident in your preparation and attempt that lift as if it was the same as any other lift. So for me, my technique with the bar is the same as my technique with my one rep max squat. I know that I've prepared and I've, <coughs> I've worked really hard to get to a stage where I can attempt a big lift. So then it's about body language, it's about focus, it's about self-talk. So your BFS, body language, focus, self-talk. Um, and for me, a huge one is just breathing. Just getting that breath in, being consciously aware of how I'm breathing and then switching on doing the lift, getting out of the lift and evaluating how that went. Half the time you do that and you're like, shit, that didn't actually feel that heavy mm. as you felt yesterday with your bench press. Mm. Uh, and then we can go again, we can add more weight, go through the same thing, check your BFS, do your big breath and attempt the weight. Yeah, nice. I like uh, visualizing the lift. So before I'm even at the bar, I like going through exactly how it's going to feel, how I'm going to feel at the end, whether I'm elated, um, excited that I've hit that particular lift and I see myself pushing through the floor if it's a deadlift, for example, and we're doing the particular lift. And I think where a lot of people go wrong is what they do in their rest times. Yes. I think a lot of people just switch off. Like they go, yeah. scroll. rest times aren't for scrolling through fucking Instagram or for dicking around. If you can do that, cool, by all means go for it. But if you are actually struggling with trying to get motivated or pumped up for the big lift, you need to be prepared the moment the lift prior bar goes down. Your thought process is all about the lift, what you're gonna do, how you're gonna initiate the muscle, how you're gonna contract that muscle, and what exactly you're gonna go through up until lifting the, the actual weights. Because in that rest time, so many people just switch off, completely just switch yeah. off. They don't think about the weight, they don't think about the workout, they think about everything else and then go, okay, big lift time, give yourself 10 seconds to go into it. She's like, yeah. it's never gonna fucking happen. I'm really happy that you brought that up actually because I didn't think about it. So your break in between sets, especially building towards a big lift, that body language and that breathing is gonna be the biggest thing that you should be focusing on there. So if you're sitting in between your rest breaks, hunched over looking at your phone, what are you telling your brain there? You're telling your brain it's time to relax, this is what I do at night before I go to bed, I'm gonna downregulate. I don't need to be firing as much. Whereas if you're sitting upright or standing upright in a good position, ready to attack, well, Messi, you're very sympathetic, which is good while you're training, everything's gonna be firing, everything's gonna be wiring in the right direction. All you need to think about is A, the visualization process of that lift and B, your breathing. So being in control of your state at all times. So if you can do that in your rest break, your lifts will increase exponentially. Yes, I mean, think about it when you're going, if you've ever played a sport, like going into a game, like everything you're thinking about is that game, what you're gonna do in that game. Yep. Same thing with lifting the weight, you just gotta really focus on what you need to do at that particular moment. Yep, yep, very good. So hopefully that helps, Mitch. So we yeah. better see your weights go up yeah, this yeah. week. Yeah, he only trained triceps anyway, so <laughs> tricep dips, go for an extra 10 kilos on it. 
<laughs> Next one. So I am an anxious person and really struggle in certain situations. Do you have any advice? You want to kick us off? Yeah. Like odd and even here. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So in terms of anxiety, I think that there's an also saying is like uh, depression is experienced from the past. Anxiety is fear or de- of experience that you're about to have in the future. So I think about like what makes you anxious as a person like what are the emotional triggers to make that anxiety kicking whether that is in public with a lot of people around whether that is in with the opposite sex um whether that is um whatever the situation is going to make you uncomfortable i think it's really important to try and define exactly what that is because then you know your emotional triggers and you can work on those to overcome that you can put yourself in those situations with a bit more of a stronger and a clearer mindset of like okay I'm aware I'm going into this situation. I know I get anxiety in this situation. What are the tools and the tricks am I going to try and create to try and change the behavior? Because as with anything, it's a behavioral pattern. Um, It's a psychological pattern of when this happens, this is the answer. This is how I exhibit this particular experience. So I think if you're able to find the trigger, you can really work around that. I think this is a really good question. I think that was a really good answer. So okay, thank you. Um, I want you to think about the wording of the question. So can you please uh, read that again? Because I think the answer actually is in the question. Mm-hmm. I am an anxious person and really struggle in certain situations. Have you any advice? So that first line, I am an anxious person. Right there, you've written yourself off. That's how you've defined yourself. And we are what we think about most. So if you define yourself as an anxious person... <coughs> Anytime you get an event that could, quote unquote, get anxiety or release anxious symptoms, you're going to exhibit that because you have defined yourself as an anxious person. Anxious, not ancient. Anxious person. Now, you're not an anxious person. Nobody is an anxious person. You just haven't practiced the opposite of anxiety. You just haven't practiced being relaxed. You just haven't practiced being confident. The more you practice that confidence conditioning or being relaxed or being focused or just controlling what you can control, the less anxious you are going to feel in certain events. But if you define yourself as an anxious person, of course that's what you're going to get. So think about how you define yourself and the wording of this question already answered it for me. You have to change that thinking. You have to rewire your brain to say, I'm not an anxious person. I just haven't practiced being relaxed in a given moment. Um, And as Abby was saying, just be mindful. If you're stressed about what's happening in the future, that's going to bring you anxiety. But if you think about what's happening right now, so if you and I were just sitting here, talking to the camera. I'm not anxious because we're just in the moment. I don't have to worry about the fact that I've got maybe something due in a week or two for uni or whatever. That's not right now. So if you just focus on being in the moment and then focus on how you're going to start acting should anything arise that brings on some anxiety, you'll feel 100% for it. So you are not an anxious person. You just haven't practiced being relaxed. Yeah, I think a lot of times like anxiety can come from like, I guess it's essentially fear. Yeah. Fear of the future, fear of what's about, fear of what if, if this happens. And a lot of times it is if, because 99% of the things that we think about never actually even come yeah, to exactly. fruition, you know? So uh, a lot of times like, when we talk about even things like fear, which is a completely different topic, but I think it will help, is that when you're afraid of something, try taking action towards doing what you want to do regardless. And what you'll find is very instantly that you forget about that fear once you've taken that step with it, starting a new gym program, getting into a relationship, whatever it might be. And you think back and go, why was I actually afraid? Because that, that barrier didn't exist. Yep. Like fear is not real. It's a, it's a mindset. Yeah. We always, you, we have an addiction to thinking about the worst possible thing yeah, that can happen. Yeah. And I don't know why mm. we have that addiction. Is it a theory of a survival mechanism? Like a, for a, yeah, for a, almost. Thing. I've heard that our worry is more stimulating than contentment. So people rather feel stimulated by stressing than they feel relaxed by just being content yeah. in the moment. A little bit of a tangent in um, the book, Everything's Fucked, which is a good title. I like it. Yeah, I think it's uh, Mark Ronson. Ronson, something like that. Talks about artificial intelligence and how everybody is stressed out about us having a friggin' army of these robots coming after us and killing us all. And it's like, why are we fearing that the worst possible qualities of human beings is what the robots are going to take on? <laughs> Like, they could just be really smart and helpful, but everyone's like, nah, they're going to kill us all. Like, that's it's it's true. just such it's an true. unnecessary stress. That's the worst quality of a human, and we are predicting that's how they're going to be. Why not predict that they're just going to be freaking legends that yeah. can help us? 
And I mean, I mean, look at social media. Like some yeah. people downplay it, but most people, most of the world are on social media. If you don't like it, delete the fucking app. Yeah, exactly. don't get a smartphone. <laughs> exactly. Really, it's not that hard to do. But like, look at what we're doing right now. We're able yeah. to communicate and put goodness and knowledge and, and help people. Like, yeah, that's the positive. Yeah, exactly. That's what we should probably think about about the robots. Yeah. Do that it's quite a love out of swatch. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Badass. Good guy. Um, next one. How do I find a goal? Ah, you gotta you gotta think about what you actually want. You gotta think about your why. Um, I think that there's something called the nine whys solution. So anytime you have a goal, you ask yourself nine times, why is that your goal? It doesn't have to be nine. I think that's just a catchy name. But what's mm-hmm. your goal? Anything. Health and fitness. Choose a goal right now. Uh, I would do a photo shoot. Do seven do a photo Why do you want to do a photo shoot? Uh, because uh, it's going to give me something to work towards. It's going to give me fulfillment when I get to that point. And what's it going to do for you when you've reached that point? Is the fulfillment the end goal? It, probably not. It'll probably keep going, but I will be healthier in a healthier state. I'll feel stronger um, in, in myself. I will feel better aesthetically by looking at myself, be more aesthetically pleasing as well when I look in the mirror. And why is it important to you to look more aesthetically pleasing? Ooh, I feel that for me, I've got to put an ideology of how I want to, to look um, and having that particular look, that, that strong, I guess it comes from a very primal standpoint. Um, um, being able to look a particular way, and f- more importantly, feel a particular way, feel strong, feel powerful, feel fast, feel athletic. Um, I've always been an athlete my whole life and I, that would give me a sense of like physical physical and, and almost spiritual fulfillment i think here we go so that wasn't nine wise you no. have a little bit more of a state of clarity you've obviously thought about your goal but yeah. for anyone who sets a goal you can see if you dig a little bit deeper what the actual purpose of that is so mm. abby's goal is not the photo shoot it's the feeling of being in that physical shape and what that's going to do for him so that spiritual happiness that mental happiness and that sense of accomplishment. So the photo shoot is just a mechanism to actually achieve his real goal. So anytime you're setting a goal, you need to go through that process. Like uh, someone might want to write a book. Okay, cool. What's that going to do for you? Why, why, why? Keep asking that until you come down to the real reason. And that's a really good starting point to setting a goal. So understand what the real innate desire is and then kind of reverse engineer that into your other steps. So sorry to, to waffle, but I think Three yeah. things to think about. Yeah, I love waffles. Have a telescope goal. So a telescope, something really big, a really big goal that you're working towards. Have a microscope goal. So things that you can do daily or weekly. So shorter goals that are going to in, be in alignment with that big telescope goal. And then you're going to reverse engineer. So you're going to strip back that giant telescopic goal into those microscopic goals and even into just daily tasks. And if those daily tasks are constantly in alignment with your goal, you will get there. You just have to persevere. I love that. I've never, I've never heard of the telescopic and microscopic. I think that's really cool. Thank you. Really, really cool. So touching on what Josh did, I think that's perfect. You need to define what's your why, like what's the purpose and what's the, what's the vision, what's the end goal and why is it important to get there? That's ultimately going to help with being motivated, which we'll get into a second, to, to keep striving towards that. But I think that's perfect as a starting point. But if I can help going a little bit more, it's, be define that goal with every sort of fiber of your being in terms of go for like for example this is me a photo shoot it's like okay cool that's the photo shoot how are you actually going to get there like let's actually create the action steps of getting to that particular goal not a case of i'm going to go get to that photo shoot cool like, and then fucking what you know like it's like create the goal okay what's your training going to look like what's your this for a first show saying what's your nutrition going to look like same thing with writing a book what does the book look like who are the characters in the book why are those characters important who are these people what are their social and economic backgrounds uh, what are their relationship with their family like know every single part of that goal so that when as Josh said you Josh said you can put those action steps in play is very definitive it's very simple it's very structured of like this is what i need to do next then this then this because i think a lot of the times people get lost with like i want to get this big uh, imaginary unattainable goal but it's so big that i never want to start yeah. and they never start but yeah. if you go cool here's the big goal the telescopic goal let's break that down into microscopic reverse engineer that process and go cool what do i need to do next yeah and that's a question i like asking myself and i advise my clients it's like don't worry about the big goal that's something we're working towards but what do i need to do next yep. and then get there what do i need to do next and just keep that moving forward over the entirety of the time you're going to 
spend getting to that particular goal. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So an acronym to just go along with that that I love is WIN. So W-I-N, what's important now? If you mm. win every day, you will eventually win. You'll get your goal. Nice. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks, sir. Thank you. I struggle to back myself when I think people might judge me for the decisions I am making. Okay, so <clears throat> I guess with this one, you've got to sort of look at the, the people that are sort of judging you. Um, ask yourself, does their opinion actually matter? And this could probably, this is probably people that are quite close to you, which so I'd imagine it's quite hard from an emotional standpoint, whether it's your parents or your spouse or your loved ones. But ask yourself, like, does their opinion actually matter and how will that change your life if it does or if it doesn't? So for example, you want to go and climb Mount Everest and this person, whoever it might be, might say, no, I don't want you to. Well, then you've got to be able to look at it and go, okay, does their opinion actually matter and how much does it matter? if you went and climbed Mount Everest and went and trained for it and did all that sort of stuff and then experienced that internal and external growth, how would that make you feel? And does that outweigh this person's opinion? And then look at that person and just be like, okay, well, why is this person telling me not to? Is that not a, not a downset in me, but a belief in themselves or a lack of belief in themselves? Why can't they do it? Why can't they achieve that particular goal? Are they telling me, because at the end of the day, people can only, tell you from their experience and, the, and through that they can only see your goal and your experience from the eyes that they're looking at you with so if they're looking from a pessimistic standpoint or a negative standpoint that's the only advice they can give they can't see it from your point of view but if you're looking at it from an optimistic or a positive standpoint that's the only way you can see it so if you think about it, their opinion really doesn't matter because they're only going to give it from their perspective not from yours so i think when you're asking this sort of question struggle to back yourself when you think other people might might judge you, they might not for a start. It goes back to the, the previous answer we spoke about, about anxiety and fear, but they might not. They may give you all the fucking love and support in the world. But I think looking at it and been, being very, very sort of self-aware of yourself, knowing that you, only you truly know what's best for you, regardless if that's talking about your parents or whoever else or your loved one, only you truly know what's best for you. And really, in all honesty, only your opinion really fucking matters. It is because that's the opinion that's going to be able to create the path and life that you're stepping towards, not somebody else. You're the only person that chooses the clothes that you wear, what time you're gonna to go to the gym, whether you're gonna brush your teeth or not, whether you're gonna follow a morning routine or not, whether you're gonna follow your diet plan or not. You're the only person that desires that. No one forces you to do anything. You do have freedom of free speech and of will in today's day and age. So there's no reason why you should think that somebody else's opinion is more important than your own. That's why I got Wow. Yeah, that's, that's I got. good. Um, I think the really key point in there is the people projecting their own pessimism onto you. You don't have to take that on. That is someone else's projection or their own fear of failure. Um, I think that if you're really struggling to back yourself, it might be because you believe what these people are telling you. Mm. So I guess you need to be a bit more clear. Do you have the confidence to back yourself regardless of what anybody else thinks? Pretend for a second or visualize that everybody's supporting you, would you back yourself then? If everybody was supporting you and encouraging your goal, would you still believe in it enough or be clear on it enough that you're going to go for it? Or are you experiencing self-doubt and you're projecting that onto other people and saying that they are going to be doubting your goal or judging your goal? So there could be an element of self-doubt here that you're than fearing or being anxious about other people's opinions when really deep inside you're, you're scared about your own choices. But if it truly is that other people are dicks and you're worried about what they're going to say, you have to focus on what you can control. I can't control what Abby's thinking about what I'm saying right now. I can't control what you're thinking about what I'm saying right now. All I can control is what I'm focused on and that is what I'm teaching you or that is what I'm sharing with you. So. Think about what you can control and that's where 100% of your focus should be on because any focus that's going on things that are outside of your control is wasted focus and it's wasted mental energy. I can't control your thoughts. Only you can control your thoughts. So if you're stressed about what other people are thinking, that's wasted energy and wasted stress. Use that energy to back yourself and follow your dream or goal or whatever it is that you're asking about in this particular question. If people are gonna judge you and put you down, you send them to us. <laughs> <laughs> we can't air me that motherfucker. Yeah, fuck. Um, nah, that's weird. I think that's cool. And I think touching what Josh said is like, 
trying to control what you can't control is trying to literally control the weather. Like, regardless of what you want it to do, it'll do what the fuck it wants anyway. Yep. But what you can do is choose to walk outside in the rain or use an umbrella. Yeah. So a decision you got to make. Do you want to use an umbrella or not? That's for bitches. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way. <laughs> uh, all right. How to stay motivated. Okay. Stay motivated to me is always a very interesting uh, little phrase or sentence because motivation is what puts you on the path. It's commitment that keeps you on the path. So if you're motivated to get ready for a photo shoot or to walk Everest, I think the motivation is always there. I think your commitment is what's wavering. So number one, you've got to be clear on what you had decided to do in the first place. And if you feel like you're not really motivated to continue, is it something that you actually really want to do in the first place? If your commitment's wavering, it might not be something that you truly subconsciously believe in. It might be an idea that you thought was good, but don't 100% back yourself to, to follow. So one thing to really focus on here is just clarity around what you want to do. Be clear of your goal, be clear of your vision. If you're motivated to get on the path, you should be committed to stay on the path. So I think commitment is the biggest thing here. Are you committed? If you're 100% committed, it's easy. You can do it. There is no other option. 100% commitment is a breeze. 99% commitment is a bitch because you will always be thinking about something else. So if you're committed to not eating fast food, if you're 100% committed, you will drive past McDonald's, no question, every single time. If you're 99% committed, you will drive past McDonald's, you'll look at it and you'll be thinking about eating something from McDonald's. Or you turn around the roundabout, go through McDonald's and buy something. So 100% is a breeze. 99% commitment is a bitch. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I think uh, the way I've always sort of looked at it is motivation doesn't last, discipline does. And um, I think when people say I'm lacking motivation or I've lost motivation, absolutely comes down to the clarity of the goal or the vision. But then also a lot of people, what I've found is that <clears throat> they only really struggle with motivation when things get hard. Like at the start, it's not that difficult to do. Like you cool, you start your new diet or your new training plan, wherever it might be. So when shit starts to get difficult, that people start to waver a little bit and try and find an out or an excuse how to stop or what can I do to make this easy? And the truth is you just need to keep going. Not every day is going to be the greatest day of training or of eating or of whatever you sort of or writing if you're writing a book or if you're gonna work towards. But every day you just gotta show up. You just gotta show up and do something no matter how small that something is, as long as you're doing something, then accumulatively over, t over time, you're going to get to that particular goal. But you just need to do something every single day instead of trying to find an excuse as to why you shouldn't do it. Start finding an excuse of why you should. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it. I think um, I think you know it, saying that when things get hard is when people kind of fall off the wagon. So. We have to remember is that if you're taking daily steps towards your goal you will eventually get there and it's not the person who gets there the fastest it's the person who's the most persistent mm. you'll get there now it's inevitable like because you're not going to stop failure only happens if you stop if you keep going failure doesn't exist you know so it's just don't stop just keep yeah. going you'll be all right and another sorry final thought now they brought up failure which is great is you only need to succeed once you can fail a million times, you only need to be successful once and you've made it. It's it's that simple. The ratio is there's never an end to that that scale. Mm. Fail fifty times, is it Thomas Edison that failed like ten thousand times? And he said I didn't fail ten thousand times, I learned ten thousand lessons or ten thousand ways not to do something. Mm. And then he had the success and we all know who Thomas Edison is now. Yeah. He's that no. painter, isn't he? Just be. <laughs> I think he's that. He's that obstetrician. Yeah. Was he Ron Weasley as well? <laughs> he ate like Ron Weasley. Right? <laughs> um, I was going to say something else though about failure. And remember, <laughs> we, we learn more from our failures than we do our successes. So as Josh said, like you only have to succeed once, but it's the failures where the lessons come from. It's where the most internal growth comes from because you learn all the ways, yes, that you shouldn't do, but you also learn the ways that are going to work along the way and it also builds up mental capacity it also builds up willpower it also builds up drive and focus and all those things that you don't have at the start all those other things that willpower get stronger by failing because you're not going to quit you're just going to keep moving forward and keep going if you look at anything like we look at things like facebook and youtube and google and <clears throat> all these really really sort of big uh, wealthy organizations and companies 
nobody really looks into how they started. Yeah. And when you do look into how they started, it's fucking insane how much failure Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, all these people went through. Um, they, they failed for years, like for years and years and years and struggled for years and years and years. And they just kept going. They just didn't stop. And now the company's out where they are. It's fixed for itself. Just don't stop. Um, I really struggle to get motivated for the gym because I have poor genetics and don't see much of a point in training. Do you have any tips on getting motivated? I think this is uh, your start. Mm. <clears throat> so I've got a feeling I know how you're going to answer this. So I'm going to go to the other end of and the spectrum. Take my answer. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to go away from it completely so that it's, I guess, a different uh, sort of paradigm shift. So struggle to get motivated because you have poor genetics. My genetics are fucking horrible. Absolutely terrible. So I know where you're coming from when you say poor genetics. And you don't see much of a point in training. Genuinely, like, I think it's just a big fucking excuse. Like, I really do. Because, like, to say you've got, not got, you've got poor genetics, everyone has a strength somewhere. Whether that is you were born lean or you were born a little bit heavier so you've got a little bit more muscle tissue or your arms grow faster or your calves grow faster or your quads or your hammies or your glutes or whatever it might be. Everyone's got something that's going for them in their favor that somebody else wishes that they would have. So don't look at, okay, I feel bad because I've got shit genetics. Relative to fucking what? Like, what are you comparing yourself to? If you're comparing yourself to Arnold Schwarzenegger, you probably do feel you've got shit genetics. But that guy trained fucking hard for all, for like 40 fucking years. You know, still trains hard to this day, you know? So stop trying to make the excuse up of, I have poor genetics, so I can't start. Look at the positive, look at what you do have, train those fucking things really hard. They'll get bigger faster, so you'll get a little bit more motivation. And then all the other body parts, the lagging body parts, you'll just train harder with different frequencies and methodologies to try and help with that. But don't try, I feel like this is a bit of an out of like, it's too fucking hard, so I'm not gonna start. Just start and just start doing something. Don't focus on I'm too skinny or too fat or whatever it might be. Focus on enjoyment. Just focus on getting in the gym. Um, I'm assuming it's, oh, it's the gym, yeah. Um, focus on getting in the gym and just having fun. Regardless of you're training bodybuilding, CrossFit, uh, doing classes, doing aerobics, doing fucking body pump. Don't do body pump. Um, what, yeah, Zumba. Whatever it's going to be, just go in there and start enjoying it because it's the journey, not the destination, that's the most exciting and fulfilling thing. So many people forget about the journey. I know that I'm training for a photo shoot now and I look back a couple of years ago and I was in horrible shape and felt like absolute shit. And yeah, I'm gonna get to a spot where I feel I'm comfortable and I'm really good and great and I feel fulfilled, but it's the journey, it's the person who I've become along the way. That's what matters because that's the lessons that I'm gonna be able to take into other facets and other areas of my life. So stop making excuses, go to the gym just for the fucking fun of it, find things you enjoy, but if you wanna go and do bicep curls every single day so it makes you feel good, go and do that. <laughs> that's what I did when I was 15. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, well, yeah, today I did as well, actually. Like um, drinks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, like Mitchell Briggs. Um, <laughs> trains his cars. Um, but go in there and just have fun. Like, go in there, just enjoy the journey. Go in there for the pure enjoyment on it, and you'll find something that works for you, and ultimately you will get the results that you want. But defining the goals we spoke about previously is really important as well. But before you even do that, Go find something you enjoy doing. You might not even enjoy going to the gym. You might just enjoy going for a bike ride or a cycle or taking up a Brazilian jiu-jitsu class or taking up a martial art or whatever the fuck it's gonna be. Just go and do something that you love and you'll find a way to make yourself better at that because of the love of it. You're yeah, up, Josh. That was exactly my answer now. <sighs> so, I have poor genetics and don't see much of a point. You have a fixed mindset, so I'm sorry we sound like we're abusing you good question we Thank hope you you're question. well we appreciate it and hope you had a good day so far yeah uh you clearly have a fixed mindset so you're probably also a person that's going to say oh well things happen for a reason we say well is things happen for a reason or is there a reason why things happen you haven't put in the work you're too sorry lazy and you have a lot of excuses but what you need to do is start to develop what we call a growth mindset so it's not win or lose, it's win or learn. We're gonna have wins and we need to have small successful wins every day. You can start small, you don't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger in one day. You can start with just going for a walk on Monday 
On Tuesday, you can add five minutes to your walk. On Wednesday, you can walk into a gym and talk about joining the gym. Whatever it might be, you need to take small, consistent steps that are in alignment with your goals and you need to rewire that thinking from, this is just how my family was, this is how I am, this is the way it's always going to be. That's complete bullshit. You just haven't practiced being the other way. You haven't applied yourself in the other way. You might actually have really good genetics, you just don't know because you haven't actually fucking trained. Sorry, but get in there. If you're doing half an hour a week as opposed to zero minutes a week, you're still going to be in a better state. And if you do not reach a physical condition that you are looking for, genetics aside, you're going to be better mentally for it. You're going to feel physically better. You're going to feel more energetic. You're going to feel better about yourself. And hey, you're changing the path for yourself. You're no longer at home sitting on the couch being worried about not looking a certain way, you're actually taking actionable steps towards something and you've changed your brain. So you just need to develop what we call a growth mindset. So a couple of things that you can do is write down a few motivational quotes for yourself and put them somewhere where you can see them. So whether it's a little card that you fashion and you put in your wallet and every time you open your wallet, you see this little card that says, I can grow, I can achieve, I can adapt, I can do whatever. You're working towards something. So you need to be in a place where you know that no matter where your starting point is, you can always learn, you can always develop, you can always improve. I don't know how to speak Spanish right now. My family doesn't know how to speak Spanish, but if I went and took Spanish lessons, I would eventually be able to speak Spanish, right? So just because sí. I... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> so just because I have started somewhere and have my current skill set doesn't mean that I can't develop. People can always grow, people can always change, people can always develop. So I do not believe necessarily in the fact that everything happens for a reason. I think that there's always a reason why things happen. And I think that you just really need to change your mindset. So move from a fixed standpoint to a growth standpoint. Everything in life is about learning, it's about self-improvement, about self-development. We want to be better <laughs> today than we were yesterday and better tomorrow than we were today. We are always on that up. So one book for you in particular is Mindset by Carol Dweck. It's going to break down a fixed and a growth mindset and give you some more actionable strategies to actually improve upon your current state because genetics is a crutch. Genetics is an excuse. When you actually start to put the work in, you'll forget all about that. And hey, you will start to love the process, which is more important than the outcome anyway. Yeah, and as Josh said, like this is not a an answer for us both just to abuse you. Yeah. Um, it not sometimes you need a kick in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> Some, like you're you're probably in the position now where people are around you that might be like, it's okay, it's fine. Just keep you know, it's okay. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Yes, you fucking do. <laughs> like you do. If you want to, if you want to change, Gandhi said it. Like, be the change you wish to see in the yeah. world. Change. If you're happy doing what you're doing, a you wouldn't have asked that question. And B, that's cool as well. That's absolutely fine. But please do not blame the fucking world for your problems. Yep. You create your own problems. Yep. As you said, from, from your mindset. Change it. You have to change it if you want to grow. And that's not just going into a gym, but that's in any facet of life because these problems are going to continue and continue and continue to arise. And as we spoke about, it's the journey, it's the lessons you learn along the way. You learn how to overcome other problems. You learn how to get better, how to be stronger, how to problem solve a hell of a lot faster by going through failure. Is it going to be hard? Yes. Is it going to suck? Yes. Are you going to fail? Fuck yes. But is it going to be worth it? Absolutely. Because you're going to get to where you want to be. You're going to, my dreams to be an actor, you know, how crazy the fucking odds are against me, but I'm going to keep going and keep pushing forward because that's the goal and it's going to be fucking worth it. And you're enjoying the journey of accumulating the knowledge and inquiring the skills that are going to get you to yeah. the goal, right? Yeah. Focus on the journey. Focus on the process. Absolutely. You'll get the outcome. And your first quote is, action is the key fundamental to all success. I'm going to claim that, but I'm pretty sure Pablo Picasso said it, to be honest. No, he was fucking anyway. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Beautiful. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess one question for you that might help people. Is there any books that, or podcasts <clears throat> or anything that you can recommend on this topic that people can continue their knowledge and understanding of mindset and mental performance. Mm. 
Hmm. Oh, that's a good, good question. So I, so personally, I like a variety of things in terms of mindset. So I look at things very much from a, I guess, a universal spiritual place. So I like books by Paulo Coelho. So books like The Alchemist is really good because it tells you about a journey and finding your personal legend, which is your vision, your end goal, wherever it might be. I also like um, autobiographies from people who uh, have achieved something relevant to me in their particular life because I think reading books by people that have already failed is great because you learn what they already know. So thus preventing, not that you're gonna stop the failure, but at least you can learn faster. You're probably gonna go through the same thing, but instead of letting that failure consume you, you're able to look at it through their perspective and their eyes and go, okay, well this person did this, how that relates to me is whatever, I'm gonna do it in a similar way because that's how they solve that particular problem. But essentially that's what failure is at, it's a problem that needs solving. We need to find a solution. These other people have found a solution. So I like autobiographies. Um, the Shoe Dog by Phil Knight is very, very good. I love Richard Branson's autobiographies, they're all great. Um, I love, um, in terms of the social media world, Gary Vaynerchuk, so Gary V. Mm -hmm. Purely because he spits the truth. Like he tells you how it actually is, not what the perception of the world is. He's very open to, you know, to, to that criticism, but he's very much like, this is the way it is. This is not my opinion, this is a fucking fact. And when we look at the facts, you can't argue with that. You know, sky's blue, grass is fucking green. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those are the sort of people that, that resonate a lot with me. I know you're a big reader, what about you? Same question. Well, Book recommendations. Yeah, I'll go a little bit of, I love all of those and the ones that I haven't read, I'm gonna get you to remind me after. I'm just gonna watch this because that's what everybody should do. Yeah, they should watch just it. Just fast should, forward to your parts. Yeah, you should download it for audio. Yeah. Because you're doing some cardio, which yeah. we mention every week. Yeah, we and do. you should. I'm not sure one person at least does that. <laughs> um, I'm going to go the more philosophy route. So I love Eastern philosophies because I believe yes. that developed a long time ago and are still very relevant today. In fact, even more so now that we have more things available to us than ever before, but we also have more stresses available or more perceived stresses. Mm -hmm. They're not really that bad, but we perceive them as stressful. So the Tao Te Ching, um, you could read anybody's version of that. Um, this is one of the three great Eastern philosophies. So you've Could got, you spell that? Uh, T A O. You're testing me now. I'm literally, I want it. Like, Tom write it. T A O. Someone might. Um, Tao. T E. T E. Someone's going to correct me. I think it is C H I N G. But if you type in the first two, which are definitely right, you will find it. And what are they? So A the series Dao. of books or? No, no, no. It's, um, so you've got three <coughs> different Eastern philosophers. So you've got Taoism, which is what we're talking about here. Um, you've got Buddhism, and then you've got Confucianism. So the next one that I'd recommend is the Wisdom of the Buddha. Many writers, so you can choose whichever version resonates with you, or read a couple of pages of a book and see if the author's way of writing is easy for you to read, because I personally connect better with different authors. Some books I read, and I'm like, yeah, the content is great, but the way it's written isn't great for me and my reading level or ability or whatever it might be. There's not enough pictures. And... Yeah, I just like pictures. I'm more a magazine guy. <laughs> I haven't read much into Confucianism, um, but that would be the third one, and that's something that I will read. Um, I think looking into mindfulness, so even something simple like the Little Book of Mindfulness is a good starting point for people who don't love reading um, but need something. And I prefer hard copy books because they actually get you into a parasympathetic state where you can sit down read and relax rather than like reading it off your phone where you're I hate that me yeah I can't do it yeah blue absolutely. light blasting you in the face when <clears> you want to be relaxed and you got this uh, body's perceived stress to this stimulus which is the book that you're flicking through it's not the same thing mm. and probably as a byproduct you're going to totally fuck your eyes audible books are good if you're driving but still it's not the same as actually phys yeah. physically going out purchasing a book sitting down and reading it it's just something a little bit magical it's fulfilling as well isn't it it's like, fulfilling yeah, yeah you can see that you've moved the pages you've ticked off some parts of the book you write down anything that's useful to you um and my probably my favorite book that i've read in the last few months is man's search for meaning by victor frankl now that is a hectic book it is very detailed in talking about his times in the Auschwitz, Auschwitz uh, concentration camp um, during Nazi Germany, uh, World War II. But when you get beyond that, his theory of logotherapy is very interesting. Um, he's basically a quick rundown, a psychologist that was taken into this camp and basically tortured. 
um, and he used his psychological teachings to basically observe what was going on with the people around him and the other prisoners of the camp and also in the guards and he offers some good psychological perspective on each of these but he also reaches into having how having a deeper purpose in life and a real meaning to your life will keep you going despite your circumstances so despite being food deprived sleep deprived and tortured every day for years in this camp you can still make it out with a meaning or a clear purpose in mm. your life so really good read but quite hectic um, nicely balanced out with the other ones that i've recommended mm. nice do you um go through your books and like highlight and make little notes and and stuff like that and then go back to them like later are you more about absolutely not <laughs> are you more I do not damage <laughs> are you? i no, used sometimes. to I, I used to not yeah but now i now i do it can be easier so what i actually do i have it in my car i have a little book and i have written a title for myself words to live by and if there's any sentence yeah. or paragraph okay. or even three words and i it really resonates with me or i think it's going to be a good tool to draw out at some point in my life i'll write that down so i have my own separate book so rather than having to flip through my library to find a certain page or whatever i have that readily accessible to me at any time of the day it sits in my car because i've got to be in my car every day to get to and from work so mm. If there's anything that I've read in the house that I really like or heard, even just through conversation, I'll write things down that I've, through interaction or through a podcast or whatever, um, when I actually get in my car, I'll, I'll write that out and I'll have that as a quick access journal or library. So it's really quick and easy. Do you, do you have the quotes that I've said to you before in there? Stay with yeah. you, eat your greens. Yeah. <laughs> Four pages of your quotes and about half a page of these other things. Yeah. No, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Beautiful. Anything else to finish off with? That's it. No, I think I'll say it. So guys, um, I think re doing reading is definitely going to, especially if you are struggling with anxiety and things like that, reading is going to really open up your mind to a lot more different philosophies of people, different mindsets, different perspectives on life. And that's going to really help you broaden your horizon, your thought processes to help you overcome some of the problems that you're currently struggling with. So definitely reading is going to be something that you should definitely all be doing every single day. Like you work out and like you brush your teeth, like reading should definitely become a habit because it's building your mental capacity up and that's really the key to everything. That's it. Beautiful. Guys, thank you so much for watching and tuning into today's vlog. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, hit subscribe, hit like, follow Josh on Instagram. Link is below and have a great day. Mm -hmm.